Hello and welcome back to our Stationers Mars Getting Started Guide and I'm your host Grumfox and today we will be taking this room and expanding it by a great deal. So first, first of all, this is my first, you know, enclosed room that has its that's been pressurized and I've been using it for various purposes both for making food and also growing hydroponics making sure that I have water and whatnot and as you can see it is rather small three by three but it was sufficient for the task I needed to do at hand but this is where I'm planning to extend it to yes a behemoth and actually it's going to be extended only by one tile but it's going to become a dedicated space so the other room that you're watching is a general purpose room where the other stuff from the main room shall be built and moved so let's get cracking so yes the focus of today's episode is building this entire beast and as every good starting uh, you know episode in terms of building goes we will be first cranking a metric crap ton of the iron frames, iron sheets and whatnot. But then again, I don't want to bore you with all the details, so it's I'm going to rather use stacker. So, you know, the this episode will be featuring lots of cuts, lots of, uh, you know, things that are mostly highlighted because the whole process of shooting this um, bad boy took about three hours, three and a half hours. And I'm pretty sure you're not interested in viewing just, you know, one thing at a time. So, rather than that, I have put together a bunch of highlights, which I think would be the most interesting, important and relevant for you watching how has this been built. So, uh, first of all, I have identified that, you know, I'm going to be building a lot of frames, sheets and whatnot. So I have decided to connect the stacker, configure it to the stack size around 50, 60-ish, and I have decided to have it cranking, you know, steel frame, steel sheets, and whatnot. So frame size here, and at this point, I have decided that I'm gonna be cranking, you know, the steel sheets, because I needed 60-ish of those. So that thing being said, look at it go nicely beautiful machine just chucking along on the ever expanding amount of iron sheets sorry uh, steel sheets that is uh, so after that was done i needed to pick them up and then we should be think thinking about starting the actual build however first things first sheets out and then i decided that well you know it has served its purpose, so I might as well, you know, disassemble it because it was actually in the way. So I decided to actually disassemble the stacker. See, it was very useful. I have built some steel sheets, right? All right. Yes. And uh, I decided to put it back in the locker just in case I need it later on. And then I realized I needed to print some more, you know, regular walls. Okay. So see... Stacker is really good. All aces, right? Yes, highly useful. I'm going to be using it for a long time to come. Surely. Probably. Maybe? Yeah. Anyway, after that all has been built, I have decided to pick up as much as I could. Basically steel sheets, uh, you know, steel frames and started to go and build the foundations of what is supposed to be our new base, yes. So, we have everything, I believe. Let's get cracking. Beautiful sunrise. It's a perfect time to start building, I tell you. So, let's go out there and let us start laying in the foundation for the extensions, yes. So, Many extensions shall be built, and I think I'm probably gonna be using the magic of editing in terms of hopping over to a time when this has been a little bit more complete than it is at the moment. Yes, and uh, almost done. There we go. See? Easy peasy, right? Love the magic of editing. Uh, these two big um, tiles are actually gonna be the airlock. So I want the, the hydroponics room and the other room to be separate, you know, pressurized environments. However, there will be some times when I will be, you know, running them together in sync. So I have decided to take out my 
you know, arc welder and just, you know, weld all these things. So we have a lot of tiles that we want to weld. And as in the previous case, you know, magic of video editing and the outer ones, I want to be welding only once because I only need to walk on those while the middle ones need to be, you know, two times welded because of them needing to be, you know, seal airtight. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Right. So, uh, with that thing being said, the battery on my um, arc welder has gone dry, so I might as well replace it with something more, you know, full. So, right. Okay, so that thing is done. Now, the next thing is to construct walls. And I have 11 walls here, so might as well. This will be an extension. It will not be a separate entrance. I was actually thinking to have this as a separate entrance room, but this will be the room where I will be mostly doing, you know, the cooking, storing stuff, maybe a suit storage and whatnot. And I think it would be better if that one just was as an extension to my regular, uh, to my regular hydroponics. So, there we go. Come on, let's place the windows. Composite window, that side. Thank you. All right. On this side as well. Beautiful. And we need to be placing windows on in there also. So the entire area has to be covered. Also, I have decided that on this side, I rather than placing a windows, I want to have steel frames because I want some area where I can actually hang things and I want some area where I can actually, you know, build in things so that they are, you know, sticking out. So I don't want necessarily in the entire area to be, you know, glassed in. Uh, so the idea here is that here I could have machines, things on the walls and whatnot, pipes, whatever, for whatever reason. And main of them will be, you know, heating and cooling because I want to have some, you know, coolers or heat exchangers or whatnot running through this area. Please also do tell me, guys, um, what is it that you guys are mostly using nowadays with all this new fluid mechanics and everything like that? What are you using in the uh, for the cooling down your hydroponics base? Are you still using the wall coolers or are you using like say the heat exchangers between you know the water and something more advanced? Because this is definitely something that I will be tackling in the future episodes. So I'm just curious to what do you guys use and what do you think the prevalent best solution is? Anyway, uh, we have been constructing, you know, the walls, the windows, you know, the window frames and the whole idea is now that the rest part will be having a beautiful view over everything there. Windows on top and yeah, because from this area you have a beautiful view over to the rest of the surface of Mars. So yeah, you may want to make sure that this is properly covered. So there we go. Two, three, all of the windows should be the same. I really do love the new models when it comes to these uh, steel, you know, composite windows. These are actually not steel, these are composite windows, plastic and uh, window, but they actually look kind of nice. Yeah, the reason why I have decided to move these guys here is because I want to have two steel frames on this side as well. Because, well, this area, these first two windows will be, you know, steel frames on the other side, and so it will be the same. And the, the, the floor, sorry, not the floor, the ceiling will not be windows, but it will be rather, you know, um, regular ceiling tiles where I will be installing the lights because I do want to have artificial lighting there. So, see, these two tiles and on the other side, I'm going to put exactly the same other tiles. So, yeah, I'm going to be planting those on that side. However, let's put here the regular composite wall type 3, I guess. I just want to rotate it nicely. There we go. Come on. Not the window. Type 1, maybe? Maybe type 1. Let's go with type 1. All right. You go like this and you go like this. There we go. Three pieces and another three over here on this side. Beautiful. Two, three. And then on the outer side, we shall be placing the steel frames like this. So plastic it in, there we go. So this will be providing some shade 
not not that that it's any of importance but more importantly there will be lights installed here while the rest will be provided by natural light of course through the windows right that being said let us now beautiful complete all these panels and after we have completed the plastic parts we need to have the glass sheets see I've told you how stacker will be highly useful. Look at it go. In this stack, in this case, my type of stacker is called Vegas Pro 17, and the method that it uses is video compression of the time. So yes, well, hmm. what can I tell you? Stacker would have been useful, and I'll probably install it at some later point where I will be joining all of the outputs from all the machines, but I have to lay them out a little bit better. But for the time being, this felt like a little bit more pressing matter. So I felt I wanted to do, you know, base expansion so I can set up proper hydroponics bay, hopefully in one of the next episodes. So yeah, there we go. Look at it go. Now this is actually much nicer already. So, however, most of you that are building these know that it's never really that simple. I mean... Right, sure, we have the construction, but we have to get, you know, electricity, we have to get everything else this way. So this is also something that I will be pondering upon. Yes. Right, uh, actually, what I also need to be able to pressurize this is the door. But first, let's check out how it looks from the top side. There we go. Then we have this uh, tiles. I'm also checking that I haven't missed any of the glass windows. That's another way of checking it. If you fall down through it, you have missed one. All right. So apparently it seems legit. Second thing that I wanted to take care of is the lighting. And this cable is the cable that's tied to the lighting. So if I drag it along this line, it will be very handy to actually extend it from here. And it has to be on the same network and using the same light source type. So, you know. Let's take the uh, wire cutters and take the cable straight and then we're just going to drag it onwards all the way up. There we go. Easy does it. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, that consumes all of my cable coil. So there we go. Let's go inside and now I've actually, oh, I have to pick up the corn first because I was actually thinking of opening up the windows because we have fully now glassed in the rest of the area. So it is okay that it should be pressurized. However, before I take down those three windows that are actually the limit between these two rooms, I needed to remove the corn because it will result in lower pressure and the temperatures are 37 degrees, which are already borderlining. Also, another reason why I wanted to go for this base expansion was so that I can, you know, have more wall real estate in terms of, you know, cooling and stuff. And that's something that I will definitely be looking into the further episodes because this one has been, been quite hard to cool. I have a one wall cooler, but that is nowhere nearly enough to pull off everything that I wanted to do. So yeah, there we go. Look at the air go. Actually, it seems like it's going outside, but it's just going all the way to the windows. I double check, triple check, and then again check to make sure that there have no leaks. Yes, it is kind of important because if it takes you a long time to pressurize, yeah, it will take even longer to pressurize this behemoth. So the current solution will no longer apply. So let's take these things away. There we go. I also didn't pay attention to this, the fact that the windows are, you know, iron windows and then are have the steel windows, but doesn't matter. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to be making the door. And I could be making interior doors, but I think that those gloss, you know, regular doors are just as beautiful. So look at this go. Two pieces and I need some cable coil. Oh, it's a good thing that I have the stacker. Yeah, it's going to become an internal meme within the, the confines of this video. I can tell you that already. All right, so there we go. Come on. 
And I need some cable coil. There we go. Beautiful. Chug it along, Sonny. There we go. We have two doors and I actually might, might want to pick up on this cable coil because after all, isn't that what we are all striving for? There we go. Look at this. Stacker in action. Couldn't be better. I'm so proud of myself. Anyway, that is nine cable coil and I'm thinking that Actually, at this point, I got really bored and I said, you know what, I'm installing the stacker. Because if you think about it, how much cable I will need to connect the other room, you know, put also inside everything that it's needed, including the doors, connecting the wires to the doors, then the airlock later on, it's going to be a hell of a lot of cable. So, and then I've got the hydration critical warning. Yes, I do have some water, but uh, this is not ideal. Okay, so turn it on, stack size 50, beautiful, and let's start making this. For the sharp-eyed among you, let me know what did I miss. However, first I need to consume water, and the electronic sprinter stopped. I wonder why. Oh, it has a cable stuck. Why? Well, you have forgot to connect the power, Dofus. Yes. Like I said, I've missed a tiny detail. The problem is that this is a mission critical detail. However, nevertheless, let, is, let us splice in the cable. There we go. Come on, stick it. There we go. Now, see, all of a sudden, everything works beautifully. Right. However, I need to remind the electronics printer to continue, you know, printing. Good, and then we can go in and start placing the aforementioned door together with some cables, which now of now I have 47. Yes, beautiful. All right, door frames are set, and let us then put you know, we need plastic sheets, and where's my arc welder? I'm actually digging the arc welder. It's actually pretty handy. I thought it was very, very, you know, battery consuming, but now I don't know if they have rebalanced it. So it's decent battery consumption. Anyway, the next thing that I now need is the, I think, glass sheet and I need to have a crowbar so that I can put the, you know, glass sheets in place. Yeah, just stick them in. There it will be fine. Okay, open. Beautiful. Now the next thing is to wire it all up and add all that needed electricity to things. There we go. And let's start building that. Yes, starting from here. Easy does it. There you go. You've got this. Perfect, and there we go, and I don't think I can cram it much in there. Oh, you know what that means, right? I will need to disassemble this cube. Oof, and I've just pressurized the environment. Oh boy. No, well, I'm not gonna depressurize it. Uh, if you have watched my, you know, Station Years building on Europa, there are a few tricks how you can get around building stuff while you still have the pressurization on. So we'll probably have to, you know, abide by one of those tricks. Let us just first finish the panel of, in terms of connecting these wires here internally. There we go. And the final one, come on, splice it in, son. I need the, where's my wire cutters? There we go, perfect, come on. All right, so that thing being said, I think we need to go outside. Oh, 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 first, I actually need to splice this in and now we need to go outside because in order to build this part, I actually need to wall off from outer side. So here I'm gonna be placing, you know, one big um, steel frame on this side and then one B side on this side. There we go. 
Okay, then we weld it in and I think that this cubicle of air will be welded from all sides, so technically it should be airproof. So, one, two, one, two, and it's welded from below, but I'm just going to weld this one just to be on the safe side. All right, so that thing being said, now we should be able to disassemble it. Let's see if we can. And some of the air escapes into just this cubicle, but not nowhere outside of that. Good. Uh, all right, so let us connect the wires. Another alternative would have been to just leave the cube as is and uh, disassemble the cube below it and come from underneath. That's also a completely viable and easy tactic to make. However, I don't know, I prefer this because I'm already building inside. It gives me a little bit of a notion of how I want to connect things and think about the, the rest, so to say. So, there we go. <coughs> Steel frame is placed back and now we can go out and actually disassemble the protecting, you know, casing. So, as you can see, the door works. Beautiful. Let's see if the other door works. Everything works. All right. That means we can now disassemble these frames here. One and two. And let me get my, you know... Let me get my angle grinder. One. Two. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So, with that thing being said, while I'm already here on the top, I might as well be extending this cable and connecting the light. So, let us just do that. And as you can tell, we are almost coming to the design that I've shown at the beginning of this video. It's gonna be a rather big-ish room, but uh, I want to have them split, because hydroponics, I want to be dedicated hydroponics because I can then change the air composition inside and whatnot while still maintaining my own pressurized room. And guys, for those of you that have been watching my, uh, you know, advanced, um, advanced airlock series, what do you think which type of the airlock should go between these two rooms? Regular or advanced? Let me know in the comment below. The answer will be provided in the next episode, of course. All right, that thing being said, we have connected the power and we need lights. Let us print two lights and connect them so that we have nice lighting in that room. All right, beautiful. One light and another light. Thank you. I'm gonna pick those up and then, yeah, wall light long, that's the one. Okay, oh, 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 oh. You, you printed the third one. Um, you might as well want to, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take four because I don't know if the long lights take one or two lights. I'm not entirely sure. So, there we go. Oh, I cannot place lights from the outside. Oh, well, bummer. Okay, I guess I need to go inside then. Let's do that. Oh, look at this. And the storm hits. Well, I would say it's perfect timing, don't you think? Everything has from the outside has been built and it's a basically an ultimate test to see how well our, you know, room behaves. Look, looks pretty good, doesn't it? I wish the models were a little bit more accurate though, however, okay, so I, we know that the wire is here. So if we place one light here on this side, and then the other, we rotate, wait a second, like this, and then just connect the two to the wire. I know where roughly that the wire, where the wire needs to be, so I can actually now be placing wires. Turns out we only needed one light, even for the long light. Uh, yes, we cannot do it without the wire cutters, because we need to splice that cable. Cable, okay, I don't want straight, I want the curve. There we go. Because then it will connect. Yeah, and these two will align. Good, see? Lighting. And now we want to be connecting the other one as well, because then we will have a nice evenly lit room especially for conditions like this, because, well, you know, you want light sources, and right now the only light source is on my back. 
See? Much better. Let's put the wire cutters away and uh, yeah, let's like look at what we've built. Looks nice, right guys? I definitely think it looks nice and that will allow uh, this thing, all of the junk from here to be moved in this room where we will have more room for even more junk. But of course we will do that in the next episode and thank you so much for guys for watching all the way to the end. I hope you liked the video. If uh, you haven't been subscribed, I hope I've earned the subscription by now, but I will be seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. This is Gromfork signing off.